Ladies and gentlemen, fellas, 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 let's do it. Let's kind of wrap up, try and put a little bit of a bow on week three by going position by position, in-depth, detailed notes, detailed talking about ownership, projections, all this other type of stuff, analysis, matchups in this video, as much as we can at least, right? Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, fellas, fellas, fellas. I appreciate you all being here today. It's the Closing Thoughts NFL Week 3 slate, and there's going to be a lot of information that I'm about to pack, punch right at you in this video. I appreciate you all being here. If you could, take a second of your time, hit that like button for me, and hit the big old subscribe button. It takes two seconds of your time on the YouTube channel. And for those of you on the podcast, how y'all doing over there? Please do take a second of your time, hit that follow or subscribe. And if you leave a review, you get entered into a chance. It takes 30 seconds, five star rate and review. You'll be entered into a chance to win $50 Ruskies this week. Thank you, everybody. I hope you've been having a fantastic week. Those streams have been so much fun. The support has been insane through the first couple of weeks. Thank you all so much as we push very, very close to 30,000 subscribers in this following. I don't know what that means outside of it just being a nice, wholesome number, but thank you in advance. I really do appreciate all the support. This is by far not the best community just in the fantasy or DFS space on the whole YouTubers. In this video, as the other Friday videos have been sponsored and our Sunday videos by Jock Market. And if you're brand new to seeing me, again, like 200 people per video of these Friday thoughts or closing thoughts are seeing me. So welcome. Again, feel free to hit that subscribe button and join the community. Hop into the free NFL Discord down below if you would like and just chat around with the community. But this is going to be sponsored if you have not yet already seen it by Jock Market. And what Jock Market is doing is it's a very innovative approach and the most innovative approach that I can actually think of to daily fantasy sports by merging it with a stock market and a stock exchange. Daily Fantasy Sports meets a stock exchange. Right now, they're currently in the Apple App Store and you can download their app also very soon on Android. It's all going to be linked down below to get to their website, to get to the app so you can check all that stuff out. And the cool thing about this is, yes, you can now buy and sell shares of players for cash. You could also play their free format, which is $1,200, but the innovative approach to it, the reason that they're different than others is they have cash markets. I played in the cash market last week. It was kind of like a rush, right? Like it's an actually a fun time. Like this week, I want to go in there, set some limits and get ready to get after it. But pretty much you're just buying low on players, right? You're buying them at price points where you think they're going to outproduce that based on their fantasy point rank for that weekend. So like last week, Aaron Jones goes off, scores 40 plus fantasy points. He's the number one player, depending on the amount of shares that you have and the price that you bought him at, you're definitely making a profit no matter what, based on his production, if you own shares of him. But depending on where you bought him at, the lower that you buy him at, obviously the higher that share is going to increase. So the whole goal is to buy low and sell high based on what you think that person's performance and thus fantasy point performance is going to be for that day. And the best part about this is the bidding is going to open on Sunday morning and close at noon on Sunday. And then you can buy and sell and trade high and buy low on your players. So if you think they're having a really good first quarter, like targets wise, but it's not yet translating over into receptions, well then go buy low on that player, right? So be sure to check out Jock Market. Again, it's where a stock exchange is meeting daily fantasy sports. It's linked down below to their website and also a spot to download their app in the Apple app store today. So what do you say we start this bad boy off with the quarterbacks? And the first quarterback that I'm keying in on, obviously the game of the week that you want to be keying in on, but these quarterbacks are going lower on than they should in the Seattle Dallas game between Dak and Russell Wilson, because there's a quarterback in the Arizona Detroit game, hint, hint, that's going well, well, well over owned, should we say, question mark, maybe we'll get to that in a second. But Russell Wilson has been pressured on 40% of his dropbacks, but he's facing a defense that's not getting a lot of pass rush. They're right now 19th overall in coverage. And and this Cowboys defense currently Trevion Diggs, their rookie cornerback is going to be questionable. And it seems like a woozy, another cornerback is questionable with the hamstring. So this secondary is beat up. There's already cornerbacks ruled out. There's a bunch that are questionable. So that's only going to help Russell Wilson, who's been hot fire through the first two games so far, the number one player, I would say in the MVP candidate race. And this is where he ranks. He ranks fifth in passing yards, first in passing touchdowns with nine, ninth in completed air yards and second in yards per attempt and a very efficient and elite metric at 9.7, where he always seems to be that high. First in completion percentage, fourth in receivers yards after the catch, which is very good to see that DK and Lockett are doing a lot for him. And first in fantasy points per game through two games with 32.6. Give me Russell Wilson here. The price point is fair. The stacking options for him in DK and Lockett, they're going to be easy to stack up. Some of them are probably going to be chalky and we'll get to that, but it's okay when you stack them all together. You get a piece of the game stack. You get a piece of this nice 30 implied team total. Next up, we have Dak Prescott at $7,200 on the opposite side of this game. I like it. I think he'll have a pass blocking advantage, although the offensive line has not been as great as in the past. They had some injuries. They had people retiring like Travis Fredericks. It's still going to be a situation against the Seattle team where they currently rank dead last in pass rush and 22nd in pass coverage. So far, Prescott ranks third in passing yards, third in attempt. He's also top five right now in air yards and completed air yards and fantasy points per game, eighth in yards per attempt at 8.3. So he's having an efficient season and you know the stacking options here. There's so many of them, which allows you to get a little bit different. Amari looks great, like a fantastic option. 
option, right? CD Lamb and Michael Gallup are still both very, very cheap options that you can get to maybe both of them and set you unique by not getting to Amari. Ezekiel Elliott, I'm fine getting into these game stacks. So yes, Dak is somebody that I want to be attacking uh, with a vengeance this week. Next up's Cam Newton. And honestly, Cam Newton, if Russell Wilson wasn't balling out so much and Lamar Jackson wasn't doing his thing through two weeks, I mean, he's up there as a MVP candidate, in my opinion. He's a top five graded quarterback, according to Pro Football Focus. He's going to have a massive pass blocking advantage, plus 31%, according to PFF, against his Vegas defensive line. Vegas ranks 31st in coverage and 17th in pressure through two weeks. Right now, you're getting Cam Newton attempting 31 and a half attempts per game. Right now, he's attempted five deep passes, but this is where it starts to get really interesting. Cam Newton is averaging the six best yards per attempt, which is a very elite metric, 8.8 yards per attempt. He's second in fantasy points per dropback because of his rushing upside, averaging 276 yards per game in the air. So all those metrics are fantastic from a passing game perspective, but now you have elite MVP a decade ago, breaking into the league, Cam Newton, mobile upside. He's top 10 in accuracy, but he has 26 carries this year, and only three of them are scrambles, 23 design runs, and he currently has 11 red zone carries, which leads all quarterbacks, and it's almost leading every running back in the league outside of Derrick Henry, who right now has 14 red zone attempts. So those 26 rushes are adding up to 122 yards, which is second most for anybody in the league amongst quarterbacks and rushing yards. He's just an elite role right now. He's $6,700, so you get a nice little discount. And yes, I think he's going to be owned, and so will Russell Wilson, so will Dak, but to be under owned again compared to the next player we'll talk about in Kyler Murray. Look, I love Kyler Murray, and this situation looks fantastic with a 30 implied team total, like a 56 overall game total in the spot. He's just $6,800. He might be the discount Lamar Jackson, a thousand to $2,000 savings at $6,800. But he's going to be insanely owned. It's looking like he's going to be 20 plus percent owned. If you're playing cash games, he's a pretty clear yes for me. If you're playing GPPs, I'm probably getting away from it because it seems like 20% of the field wants to own Kyler Murray plus DeAndre Hopkins. It's a really good stack. It's a really good matchup, but that ownership is a little bit too high for NFL in my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm getting 0%, but it probably means I'm coming in well below the field on 25% stacks of Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins or 25% Arizona stacks in general. But let's break some things down here. You have Kyler Murray, who's probably going to have a positive pass blocking advantage according to Pro Football Focus of plus 14% against Detroit. Detroit currently ranks 30th in coverage and about average 15th in pass rush. So not bad. One of Detroit's cover cornerbacks, the former Atlanta Falcon, Desmond Trufant is going to be questionable with a hamstring for week three. This is where Kyler Murray ranks so far through two weeks. He's right now eighth in deep ball attempts and eighth in attempts overall. He's currently fourth in fantasy points per game, fifth in total QBR. He's first in rushing yards with over 30 more than Cam Newton, and he's second in rushing TDs. But yes, all the rushing yards are fantastic. That's why he's getting highly owned because of what he's doing. He's not, I don't expect Kyler Murray to go out there and have on this season, 20 plus rushing touchdowns, right? I know that he's on pace for that with his three rushing touchdowns so far, but I don't expect it. And what's happening in the passing game is not the same as Lamar Jackson. He's not efficient. He's not being fantastic in the passing game. He's getting elevated by his ground game, which is good for fantasy, but not when you start to become overowned because if those rushing touchdowns go away, well, now you're really busting at this increased price point. Just 6.6 yards per attempt so far. He's being pressured on 30% of his dropbacks, which is a decent amount. It's a situation where, yes, I know how good he has been so far, but I'm not going to bank on rushing touchdowns for a guy who's highly owned with an increased price point. I think he's a fine cash play. I think he's okay for GPPs. I'm just going to be below the field. So yes, I do have interest in all these expensive quarterbacks. As you see, Josh Allen is a yes for me. Yeah, it's a tougher matchup against the Rams. Yeah, you're going to have some tougher cornerback play out there with Jalen Ramsey, probably on Steph Diggs. And Jalen Ramsey's hit or miss these days over his last like 16 games. He's been okay to bad to sometimes he shows out and plays decent when he's healthy. Josh Allen's probably gonna have a brutal time in terms of his offensive line against this Rams defensive line. It's a pretty big disadvantage according to pro football focus. Josh Allen throws so far through two weeks. He's first in passing yards. He's fourth in air yards and fourth in deep ball attempts with 10 right now. He's picked up 75 rushing yards and a touchdown on 18 rushing attempts, most of those which are scrambles. He's currently fifth in deep ball completion percentage, which everybody says he's not accurate. Well, so far through two weeks, he's been very, very accurate. Maybe Steph Diggs is helping that. And second in fantasy points per game behind Russell Wilson with 31.3. Josh Allen has looked very good so far. Nine yards per attempt, 40.5 yards per game. And here's the thing. He's not going to be owned. He's going to be below 5% owned this week. Yes, I get it. He's expensive. I get it that his stacking options and John Brown has kind of been getting a little bit lucky with fluky touchdowns and Steph Diggs now is a tougher matchup. That's all very true but he's playing fantastic and they're opening up for him. Even in leads in the second half by multiple scores, they're still throwing the ball. So we'll see. I think that the ownership being low makes sense, but it's a spot where I'm probably going to be a little bit above the field on Josh Allen. Doesn't mean I'm coming in 10 or 20% on bill stacks, but if I have 5% bill stacks and I'm double the field, that feels pretty good. Next up, Matthew Stafford on the opposite side of this Arizona game. I actually like this side of it a little bit more and getting exposure. Look, look, it's an all in ownership play, right? And getting exposure to Arizona on the runback stacks of either DeAndre Hopkins or Christian Kirk or both of them, Kenyon Drake, whoever you might want. But Matthew Stafford at 6,300, 
Conjure. It seems like he's going to get Galladay back. Galladay's been practicing so far every day this week. Just keep a close eye on that, which allows Marvin Jones to be the rightful number two wide receiver, which maybe allows and takes a little bit of pressure off of him. Really, it just opens up the Detroit stacks when you now have Kenny Galladay back, and then you could add into that a TJ Hawkinson and Marvin Jones, whatever you want to do from there. But it looks pretty good. Probably a positive pass blocking advantage as Arizona currently just ranks 16th in pass rush, 14th in coverage. Stafford so far is top 10 in air yards and passing yards on the year. He has 591 air yards and 541 passing yards. He's averaging a pretty NFL league average right around seven yards per attempt as league average. He's having 7.2 yards per attempt and about 38 attempts per game. So I like that spot. Carson Wentz on the opposite side of this. This is the buy low spot for Carson Wentz. This is the Colin Coward mocking him all over the place. Carson Wentz spot. I kind of like Carson Wentz this week. He's not going to be a priority, but Eagle stacks are something that I expect to get to right now. He looks terrible. He's 34th in yards per attempt. He's right now 32nd in completion percentage. It's not good. And he's getting a little bit of time. His offensive line ranks 18th so far in terms of a team's quarterback's pressure per dropback. So Wentz does not look good right now, but the upside is the fact that he is throwing top five times per game, 42 per game. He has thrown the second most deep ball attempts. He now gets a fantastic matchup against the Cincinnati team that ranks 31st in pass rush and 13th in coverage. He's second in air yards with 778. And you have the clear stacking options. Jalen Rieger's out. That's not great, but you still have Zach Ertz. You still have Dallas Goddard. You still have Deshaun Jackson, and you still have the elite running back. Yes, I said it, elite looking running back workhorse in Miles Sanders in the backfield. So I'm still not going to give up on Wentz just yet. He has looked terrible. I get it. Yes, he kind of has sucked. He has straight up sucked the first two weeks, but this is a get right spot. If he doesn't get right here, then there's major concerns for Philadelphia fans. And then my last yes is going to be the rookie. I kind of like these stacking options. It's going to be a lower owned spot, but they have a 25 implied team total. Justin Herbert helps out Austin Eckler to allow him into maybe some of your game stacks. Not really sure about your team stacks. They're versing a Carolina team that currently ranks 32nd overall in team defense, according to Pro Football Focus. Right now, they're 29th in pass rush and 28th in coverage. They have allowed the 10th most passing yards so far. He went off in his debut in week two. He ended up going for 22 of 33, 311 yards, a touchdown, a really bad interception. And then he picked up a rushing touchdown and 18 rushing yards. I think this is a pretty nice spot. Brian Balag, the former Packer for the Chargers off offensive line, their offensive tackle is going to be questionable for this one with a knee injury. So be sure to track that. But you have really nice stacking options, a cheap quarterback of $5,900, Keenan Allen and Hunter Henry, who have been seeing targets from both of the quarterbacks so far this year and getting open. Allison Eckler, if you really wanted to, Mike Williams is probably not somebody I'm going to here, but Keenan Allen, Hunter Henry, and Justin Herbert run it back with somebody from the Carolina side, probably a DJ Moore, something along those lines seems pretty decent for game stacking options. And the rest of my quarterbacks I have interest in that I'll probably get some stacks on Matt Ryan in Atlanta, Big Ben in Pittsburgh, uh, Philip Rivers in Indy, Jared Goff in the Rams, and Teddy Bridgewater in Carolina. This is not my set in stone stuff. We'll be having a closing thoughts podcast this weekend on Patreon. I have projections, I have rankings, 24 pages of game by game notes. It's actually 25 pages of game by game notes, over 7,100 words, all involved to help you with your fantasy, your sports betting, your DFS, whatever it might be. Then I have projections, then I have rankings for every single position, for cash games, for tournaments, all that type of stuff, and a lot more. Closing thoughts podcast that was about 55 minutes last week on my process, my position by position, my stacks, where I think the strategy is for this week, and just the more informed you are the better the chance you have at winning so if you want to join patreon that's also linked down below that's where we'll get more in detail on the weekend on what i'm doing with overall stacks and my exposures and then sunday morning 10 a.m east coast time on youtube we'll go live and i'll answer your questions to close out the slate and now we get into the running back position where this one is going to be starting off with the man himself ezekiel elliott look it's hard not to like zeke right zeke has just been fantastic in every single aspect that you have he's currently the number one running back in fantasy football based on the guys that are actually hurt in saquon and mccaffrey in my opinion so so far the matchup will have against seattle they rank fourth in tackling and first in run defense but don't look at that too much. It's kind of inflated. Week one, they got Atlanta when they got up big on them. They weren't running a lot with Todd Gurley, who has not looked that great so far, right? Last week, another situation in which there wasn't really teams running all that much against them. So the run defense might be maybe top half in the league, maybe top 10. I don't think it's number one overall. You're getting Zeke running 64 routes, second most in the league right now. That looks really good. He's top two in red zone touches with him and Derrick Henry. He's second in yards after contact with 143. He's second in overall target share through two weeks, not counting the Thursday night game with 11 targets. Like this just looks really good. He's involved everywhere. And the price point only goes up $100 in this high game total and team total of 26 points. It seems like Zeke's going to be scoring 20 touchdowns this year. I'm going to be on Zeke yet again this week. I like it. And for some reason, it seems like I'm assuming it's the price point, but also keep this in mind. Zeke's the most expensive player on the slate this week when you have a bunch of players injured, when you have Mahomes and Lamar Jackson not on the slate, Christian McCaffrey and Saquon are injured, Michael Thomas is not on the slate, but he's also injured, things like that, right? Zeke is going to be at 8,300, the most expensive player on the slate. So I'm kind of shocked to see his somewhat low ownership below 15%. I think he's a pretty decent cash game consideration, and I think he's a strong tournament play as well. Next up is Jonathan Taylor, and in week two, Jonathan Taylor saw 67% of the Colts snaps to Naeem Himes, who people were somewhat worried about, only seeing 12%. So far through two weeks, Jonathan Taylor ranks 10th in fantasy points per game as a 
rookie. That's fantastic. That number is going to go up once he starts scoring more and more touchdowns. He got the touches last week. He put up a stat line of 26 attempts, 20 touches in the first half, 12 touches in the first quarter, 26 attempts, 101 yards, and a touchdown. He caught two balls on two targets for nine yards as well, which actually led the running backs, not Naeem Hines. Hines only saw one target and no usage at all. He's seventh in receptions and fifth in receiving yards for running backs so far through two weeks. This kid looks like a stud. $7,000 is still $1,000 too cheap. Yes, that is right. It is. Against the Jets, they pretty much rank average 13th against the run so far. I like what I'm seeing here. He has a top five offensive line. They're 10 and a half point favorites with a 27 implied team total. Go get yourself some Jonathan Taylor. $7,000. Strong in tournaments. Strong in cash. He's going to be owned in tournaments. Probably pushes 20%, but that's fine for me. I think he looks like a good play. Next up is just a guy that you're locking into your cash lineups. And if it goes wrong because he gets injured or something goes wacky, it's all good. It's the right play. $6,400 Miles Sanders is $1,100 too cheap in touring to my projections. He looks fantastic. I have Miles Sanders at $6,400 projected for 19 fantasy points. He's going to be the highest owned running back in tournaments. That's fine. He'll probably push 30%. That's fine. Like you can get away from it if you want. In cash games, I'm playing it for sure. In tournaments, I'm sure I'm going to be above that number. I might have double the field on Miles Sanders at like 60%. I'll run my crunches probably this weekend, but I'm assuming I'm going to come in well above the field based on how much of a value play he's playing out for me. Right now in jock market, he's the 10th overall player. That seems pretty appropriate for right now. Ezekiel Elliott is 13th. I think there's some value in that number if you want to be getting to that. But Miles Sanders just looks fantastic. He faces the 20th ranked Cincinnati run defense as a touchdown favorite. And last week he had 27 opportunities, 23 touches, 20 carries, a touchdown. This is a game, seven targets, three catches, right? He's going to bring in a lot more than three of seven targets moving forward. And that's a game where they're trailing the whole entire game against the Rams. Looks like a really nice spot. He's going to have a neutral run blocking advantage in terms of his offensive lines push, maybe even a positive there. Go get yourself some Miles Sanders. Don't overthink this one. Next up, I actually have Joe Mixon as a yes. I'm getting so many people asking me, should I trade Joe Mixon for X player? Should I trade Allen Robinson for X player? Evan Ingram, like all these buy low candidates. Yeah, trade them all to me. Trade them all to me because they've had two bad weeks, even though they're getting all the usage. Joe Mixon has seen right now, so far, 40 opportunities through the first two weeks, 35 carries and five targets. He's ran 45 routes. He doesn't have a great target share. I'll admit that just like a 6% target share, but all this is going to come up. He's facing Philly who so far through two weeks, has just been average against the run 16th overall. So I actually think that in tournaments, not so much in cash in tournaments at $5,900, Joe Mixon looks like a good play. He's still evading tackles. He's still running routes. His quarterback's just not throwing to the running back position yet. I think that's going to change, especially when they just gave him a pretty big extension. He has a 75% opportunity share overall over the running backs in his backfield. He's seen four red zone touches, five catches right now on 44 routes run. That is the seventh most routes run in the league by a running back. Again, a 6.4% target share and 14 of eight tackles. It's top five in the league right now. So yes, Joe Mixon, everybody's sour on him, but I think it's a nice buy low spot as he's only in the 5k range now. I'm going to like Nick Chubb this week. Nick Chubb's a seven point favorite. This is a really good spot for him against Washington, who has a good defensive line, but not as good against the run so far this year. They're right now around league average against the run. And what you're getting so far in week two, Nick Chubb saw 62% of the running back snaps in this backfield. He had 22 carries for 124 yards and two touchdowns. He also caught a pass for nine yards. And on the season, after everybody's jumping up and down and some podcasts out there, I, I heard, I saw some clips on Twitter that Kareem Hunt's now the lead back in this backfield. I mean, talk about overreactions from the week one of the season. Right now, Nick Chubb ranks so far fourth in overall rushing yards, fourth in goal line carries, first in yards created in the NFL, first in breakaway runs and six in evaded tackles. Yeah, Nick Chubb is still that dude. And when the game flow is going to say that they're going to be ahead, like this one is currently going to say, although I have the Washington side, check out my sports betting video so far for this week for the four lines and the teaser that I like, but Nick Chubb in a touchdown favorite game based on how good he's playing right now, creating yards in his own, evading tackles, and just getting a ton of goal line work and red zone carries. Yeah, give me Nick Chubb at 6,900. He should be a 7K running back. It's also worth pointing out that Nick Chubb is going to be wildly, wildly under owned. I'm talking like low, low, low single digits ownership. I get it. The price point's a little bit up there, but there's no reason Nick Chubb can't go off this week. And the fact that Nick Chubb is going to be like, I don't know, 5% or below owned is way, way, way too low. And the final, yes, I have it running back. And then it's about 10 guys I'll quickly call off as maybes and guys that I will have exposure to. And again, some of this stuff can change by the weekend. It's Kenyon Drake, who's going to be highly owned. I'd rather play Miles Sanders than Kenyon Drake. They're going to be similarly owned if that's the case. But Kenyon Drake gets the matchup where Aaron Jones just dominated last week, where Detroit ranks 26 in run defense and 21st in tackling, where Kenyon Drake saw 65% of the snaps last week, the Chase Edmonds 35. And he ended up seeing 20 rushing attempts, 22 overall touches for about 95 yards. He's going to find the end zone soon. Kyler Murray's not going to score 24 rushing touchdowns this year. It seems like everybody's on Kenyon Drake, and it makes sense because he's still too cheap at $6,000 flat. Like you can make a really nice cash line it by going Zeke, uh, Miles Sanders, and Kenyon Drake. I kind of want to get Jonathan Taylor in there, but you can only play three running backs. And that's a pretty nice way to save some money. I don't know how much money you have to save this week based on how there's not that many expensive players, but Kenyon Drake looks really good in this matchup. It's going to be a positive run blocking spot for Kenyon Drake and a positive running matchup against this Detroit Lions defense that has been just atrocious, just as Aaron Jones last week. And then some guys that I'll have 
interest in is going to be both of the Chargers backs and Austin Eckler. The fact that you're going to have Justin Herbert starting is nice. And then for a value type of a play, I don't know how much I actually get, but Joshua Kelly, Jarek McKinnon is worth pointing out. I'll also kind of point out that um, I, I don't think I've marked it here, but uh, Jeff Wilson Jr. is also going to be in play for me. He'll be more so in play for me. It's not on this video right now. If you're watching on YouTube, he's not on the sheet, but he's on the sheet on Patreon. He's projected out better right now than Jarek McKinnon for me. If I look at Jeff Wilson Jr., if I go over to Patreon, again, my Patreon is linked down below. The name of it's popping up on the screen right now. It's patreon.com backslash Sal underscore Vetri underscore. If I sort it by value currently right now at the running back position, number one popping up is Sanders. Number three running back popping up is Jeff Wilson. I have him projected for about 10.8 fantasy points right on the nose. I think he's going to be the lead back and see more touches over McKinnon. I think both are in play, but right now Jeff Wilson is also cheaper than McKinnon. So I'd rather play McKinnon. It is a tougher matchup against the Giants who actually have a pretty decent defensive line. They had a Blake Martinez, who's a very good tackling linebacker and a good run stopper from Green Bay. So I think that that's an okay spot. Derek Henry, Dalvin Cook, these are some more expensive guys that are in play for me. James Conner and Chris Carson are nice mid range options that are going to be decent pivot plays, especially Chris Carson. I think Chris Carson will probably come in with single digit ownership or close to it. Some other cheap considerations are probably going to be uh, Joshua Kelly, like we mentioned, Antonio Gibson. Maybe I get some David Johnson. I thought he might be lower owned this week. He's not coming in lower owned. He's being game flow independent with the amount of routes that he's running. So I don't know if I get there as much. And then Mike Davis is 5,100. He's already expensive enough. I don't need to get here at $5,100 when guys like Kenyon Drake are 6,000, when Miles Sanders is 64, when Joe Mixon is 59. He's in a player pool for me right now, but I assume I don't get much of him. CMC is on the short-term IR officially as of a couple days ago. He's out four to six weeks. Uh, Mike Davis did see eight targets on 16 routes, seven in the fourth quarter. He just got one carry. I expect him to see 12 to 15 touches. I just think he's appropriately priced right now against a pretty good and a very good Chargers defensive line and overall defense. We now move into the wide receiver position where a lot of these wide receivers, and take a second of your time, hit that like button for me, hit the big old subscribe button, go download Jock Market down below in the Apple store or go to their website and check that all out. Daily Fantasy Sports meets that stock exchange. You could buy, sell stocks, buy low, sell high is the goal of it live at any point. You can try and bid on them or you can get it live during the games, buying low, selling high. That's the whole goal here. We'll touch on some of the Jock Market wide receivers ranks right now and spots where you can maybe find some value. But a lot of the wide receivers I like are going to be connected to stacks. I'm still game stacking. I'm still team stacking in every single one pretty much of my DFS lineups when it comes to GPPs. And what you're seeing right now is a bunch of yeses. You're going to see I have a lot of wide receiver interest because you should be rostering a lot of wide receivers if you're playing a lot of lineups. So right now, in terms of my overall player pool, I have about 40 wide receivers. Maybe that gets cut down a little bit. And again, like five or six of these guys, maybe even 10, I'll only have like one or 2% of, and a lot of them will be bulked up into my stacks with my quarterbacks. And it shouldn't shock anybody, but I have interest in the Dallas and Seattle players. And Damari Cooper has been the most quiet, like 16 catch, 180 yard, two weeks of a season so far, right? He has 22 targets. He's pretty elite from his yards per route run. He has 90 routes overall run. He's projected for this one close to double digit targets for me. And he's overall third in receptions, ninth in receiving yards, second in targets. And he's pretty much top 10 in everywhere else. Air yards, completed air yards. He's looking good so far. And yes, he's going to pick up ownership, but I actually think that it won't be anything overwhelming. Like, I don't think he'll be in the 20%. If anything, maybe he pushes it. But if you are stacking, it should help you there. He'll have a matchup against Shaq Griffin. I think he can win that matchup. We saw him do uh, some real good things against guys like Jalen Ramsey earlier this year. He's had success there. So I like Amari. I like both DK and Tyler Lockett. Lockett does seem like he's going to be the overwhelmingly uh, higher owned one. So I'd rather play DK for $100 more if he's going to be like half the ownership. So I'm going to prefer DK Metcalf there, although I like both of them a lot. If you're playing Russell Wilson, a pretty easy, easy and obvious stack is DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, who are both just way too cheap. To this week. But the one who's $100 more in DK, who in my opinion has been playing a little bit better so far this year, eight receptions for 187 yards. Yes, Lockett has been bringing in the receptions with 15, just 159 yards and hasn't found the end zone on 16 targets. So seven targets a game for Metcalf on average and right now Lockett eight out of the slot. Yes, all these Dallas cornerbacks are pretty much banged up right now. I like both of these guys a lot, but if you're telling me that if you have to pick one of them and you don't have to, you can stack them both up. But if you have to pick one of them, if the one that is going to be half his own in DK that I actually like a little bit more from a projection standpoint, it's going to be half his own. I'll go there a little bit more than Lockett. OBJ from Cleveland. I'm going to have interest in Odell this week. Odell just came out and said, my numbers aren't going to be as good this week. And everybody's probably going to jump up and down and say, oh, I can't play him this week. What do you mean you can't play him this week? It's a good matchup against Washington. They'll probably face Mareo, but it's fine in my opinion. He last week had in week two, a 28.6% target share. He saw six targets, four receptions, 74 yards and a touchdown. He ranks eighth in air yards. He has a 40% team share and he's 14th in overall air yards with 207. OBJ, in my opinion, has looked very good so far. And a man who has looked very good in terms of the overall efficiency numbers, the overall numbers that are expecting and projecting him to break out is Allen Robinson. I have him in a couple of leagues. Go try and trade for him in your season long leagues. Likely he's going to face Oliver who allowed 1.58 yards per route run last week, which is way too high for any type of a defender. And Allen Robinson has just been seeing so much usage right now. 84% of the snaps. He's seen 18 targets, a 28% target share. He's top eight in air yards. He's seen three red zone looks, five D 
deep targets is fourth in the league. A 13.4 yards per reception metric. He's only 6,200 against Atlanta. His team currently only has a 22 implied team total. I don't care. He's going to see another eight targets in this game. And eventually he's going to start bringing in these deep bombs. And eventually he's going to start bringing in those red zone looks. Allen Robinson is way too cheap, probably about 500 to $800 too cheap. Go get some Allen Robinson. I can pretty much say the exact same analysis for some of these next players. DJ Moore got back on track last week with 13 targets from his quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater. Yes, it's a tougher matchup. Probably going to see a lot of Casey Hayward this week, but it's fine for me. He ranks fourth overall in targets, fifth in air yards right now, eighth in deep targets, fifth in completed air yards. He's looking very good. You're probably going to get some Casey Hayward this week out of DJ Moore. You'll probably also see some other matchups as well against like Michael Davis and some other spots, depending on where DJ Moore is going to move on the field. I mentioned that I like Justin Herbert. So that also means that I'm going to like Keenan Allen, who already has seen a 43% slot usage, 17 targets very quietly, about two yards per outrun, four deep targets so far. He'll probably face some Jeremy Chin, which is going to be a massive positive matchup for Keenan Allen. He's overall top 10 in deep targets, targets, target share and yards after the catch so far. Keenan Allen, again, quietly as he normally is still playing very, very well football. So this one's going to be like a tournament winner, probably going to score you like hundred yards and two touchdowns. If he plays AJ Brown, you just have to watch if he plays and he's healthy. He is going to bully and dominate Holton Hill. Like it's not even going to be close. He'll probably also see some Glandly, Jeff Glandly, which is what Minnesota is now forced to run out there at secondary because they already have no other options because they didn't do anything to help their secondary. They lost all their pieces in their secondary. And yeah, Holton Hill, the rookie has just been getting dominated through two weeks. This secondary is not good. Still bottom five in the league through two weeks. AJ Brown, $6,000 flat. He looks like a very strong play. He is currently ranked 115th, 115th on jock market. If indeed AJ Brown is healthy and active, AJ Brown looks like one of the best, if not the best values right now in jock market. Out of 120 players, he's ranked 115th. I think he's going to beat out a lot more than that. A lot more than five people if he's healthy. He has the opportunity. And I'm not, I'm not being crazy here. He has the opportunity to be the highest scoring player on the slate. It's tough for wide receivers. They usually have to put up multiple touchdowns or like 200 yards, but he has that opportunity in this matchup. How we saw Devontae Adams go off week one. This is the exact same matchup for AJ Brown, who's a more dominating player, I would say size-wise, not uh, efficiency-wise in terms of his route running, but more dominating size-wise in the matchup against Holton Hill. I have interest in Deontay Johnson, who I think might actually explode this week in his matchup against Houston secondary, against guys like Roby and Hargraves, who it's just been really bad. 87 routes run so far. He has a 32%, 32% elite target share. That's what Juju right now in this wide receiver course. He's 12th overall in yards after the catch with a 10.6 yards per reception, 23 total targets on 72 routes. Yes, he's still too cheap at 54 dollars I like it a lot. And because of the fact that CeeDee Lamb is the exact same price point, I actually think that you're going to see Deontay Johnson be a little bit lower owned than he should be. Maybe he doesn't even see 10% ownership. And speaking of CeeDee Lamb, I'm going to have interest in the other Cowboys with wide receivers in CeeDee Lamb right now. In week two, he had six receptions. He went over 100 yards on a 19% target share and nine targets. He lines up in the slot 91% of the time. He currently has 11 receptions on the year, which is 15th. He's fifth in yards after the catch. He's just looking like a monster as a rookie, but 86 yards after the catch. And the final Cowboys wide receiver that I like is Michael Gallup. Not seeing as much usage, just two catches, 58 yards on five targets in week two, just a 10.6% target share, but he's still getting a lot of usage downfield. He's third in overall average target distance in the NFL with 18.2, and he's sixth in yards per reception with 21.6. So he's getting these deeper targets. And yes, in a high powered offense where Dak is throwing a lot and throwing deep in a high scoring game that this is projected to be by Vegas, I do want to be getting those opportunities to go downfield and seeing these big play upside receivers in Michael Gallup. The only issue is that Michael Gallup's actually coming in higher on than CD Lamb right now, like almost double the ownership. This is the same situation with Tyler Lockett versus DK Metcalf. So I'm just forced to want to take the lower owned one. I do think that Michael Gallup has all the upside in the world, but if two times the field is also thinking that compared to CD Lamb, well, I'll just go to CD Lamb. This doesn't mean I'm not playing both of them in lineups. They're going to make my groups and they're going to be in a lot of my team and game stacks in both lineups. But it's just interesting to see that Tyler Lockett and Michael Gallup are double the ownership of their other wide receiver on their team at similarly priced. Pretty interesting. We'll see if that holds up coming closer to lock. Nikhil Harry is somebody who deserves ownership and I think he's going to get it this week. He's a, he's a cash consideration for me, honestly. Like he's 42 dollars He's played 35% of the time out of the slot. He'll have a really good matchup against Mullen this week. He's seen 60 routes and a 29% team target share. Him and Julian Edelman are like the only guys being targeted by Cam. He has a sneaky 13 receptions on 17 targets. I like this. 8.5 yards per reception. It's not great downfield, but it's going to come for him a little bit better. You're seeing some red zone looks as well. 38% team target share in the red zone. That's very good. So yeah, I'll take Nikhil Harry all day. I'll take his teammate Julian Edelman as well all day. Number two in air yard target share per team right now in the league. He's top 10 in overall air yards. He's seen 72 routes. 18 targets also has a 29% target share in this team 18.2 yards per reception and a very very strong matchup against LaMarcus Joyner in the slot this week some other considerations at wide receiver that I like obviously obviously DeAndre Hopkins is fantastic if you can get him in cash you should try to be prioritizing DeAndre Hopkins in cash because he's been an absolute monster so far this year 
with 25 targets and he's bringing in 22 of those. He's been an absolute beast over 200 yards and a touchdown. The issue is he seems like he's going to be the highest owned player on the slate, 30 plus percent ownership and GPPs. You can still play it. You can still play that, but you're not getting any leverage on that stack with Kyler Murray unless you run a full game stack, which again, I think you should do to get a more unique lineup. And then you don't have to worry as much about the ownership when you're running a Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, run it back with Kenny Galladay on the opposite side type of a stack. But Kenny Galladay is also going to be highly owned, probably going to be a top five owned wide receiver this week, according to a lot of projections around the industry. So I do like Kenny Galladay as well. And then lastly, a couple of guys to call out. There's like a list of like 15 more guys. Again, you can get Patreon. You can check out all the guys that I have interest in, all the projections. But AJ Green, seeing so much usage downfield. And it's not AJ Green's fault that he hasn't popped off. Burrow has been bad. Yes, Joe Burrow has been bad. Now, relative to being a rookie with no camp, yes, he's looked pretty composed and decent. But his overall stacks, he's dead last in yards per attempt. He's one of the worst accuracy quarterbacks through two weeks. And he's missed AJ Green on a deep touchdown. He's missed AJ Green on about a 25 yard reception. AJ Green should have another touchdown and 60 more receiving yards this year. AJ Green has looked good at separating, in my opinion. So, yes, $6,000 AJ Green at low ownership because nobody wants to play him uh, for, in my opinion, no good reasons. Yeah, I like AJ Green. Adam Thielen at $6,900. He seems like he's going to be owned this week. He should be. He leads the entire NFL in team share of air yards right now at 55%. And then Michael Pittman at $4,000 flat. Michael Pittman is somebody to keep a very, very close eye on. I don't think he's going to pick up any ownership at all. It seemed like last week pretty quickly, he already jumped Zach Pascal in that order. Again, it does seem very much so that Paris Campbell is going to miss the entire season. Last week, Michael Pittman had a 24% target share on six targets, running four of them for 37 overall yards. His snap count increased from 52% to 92% last week. Michael Pittman at $4,000. I'm not yet sure if he's all the way there for a cash play, but he's a very good tournament play at low ownership and a low price point for somebody who saw his snaps increase by nearly 40% last week. There's a bunch of other guys that I'm interested. So if you're saying in your head, Sal, how do you like, not like Mike Evans, Godwin, Julio, all these types of guys, uh, Ridley, all these types of guys, they're, they're on a the list. They're all on this list. I'm scrolling right now on YouTube, Deshaun Jackson, Brandon Cooks, Robbie Anderson, Christian Kirk, Robert Woods, right? Well, Marvin Jones, all these guys, there's a lot of guys I have interest in. But if I talked about all 35 wide receivers to 40 wide receivers that look good, that are in a potential player pool for me, we'd be here for three hours. So I want to make sure you guys have at least some time in your day to have some fun. But yes, before we go, AJ Brown on Josh market does look like a pretty buy low obvious spot at 115th ranked. So does AJ Green at 94th ranked overall. I think those are some really good spots. Amari looks like a decent value. I say he's okay at 52nd overall on there as well. And then as we close this video up with the tight end position, please do hit that like button and the subscribe button. And you should also check out Monkey Knife Fight. Monkey Knife Fight is going to be the second sponsor of this video. 100% deposit match up to $50 rooskies if you use the promo code VETRI, my last name, V-E-T-R-I. If you don't know what Monkey Knife Fight is, it's a player prop site. You take the more or less, you take the over under receptions, passing yards, receiving yards, let's say, for example, Darren Waller over on their five receptions, right? You get that right. You win part of the bet. You win part of the overall player prop bet. And you can get right now a 100% deposit match up to $50. It's a very good offer. They're doing it. They started it like 10 days ago, maybe two weeks ago now at this point. But if you want to put $10 in the minimum and try it out, they'll give you $10 for free. If you want to be a high roller, a head honcho, a kingpin and put $50 rooskies in, they'll give you 50 for free. And now you got a whopping $100 bill, $100 rooskies in your account to play with on some props. It's a very fun format. If you're playing player props anyways, you should really consider it and check it out to get this bonus before the offer fades away and while it lasts. So let's get in right now to the tight end position where we're going to have a bunch of tight ends that I have some interest in, right? So Darren Waller to start it off. How do you not have interest in a guy who I do think Bill Belichick will try and game flow him out of this one. He's going to pick up ownership. Number one in targets with 23, 19 receptions. He has 143 yards on the year. He's just an absolute monster. I like Darren Waller. The price point's too cheap. If he did not play on Monday night, he'd probably be $500 to $1,000 more expensive. He'll have a tough matchup against Adrian Phillips, if anything. And again, I do think Belichick will try and factor him out of this one. He has a 39% target share right now. That leads all tight ends and that's up there as leading all players in this league. I think only Hopkins is higher than him. He's played 96% of his snaps. He's right now has ran 26 and a half routes per game. So yes, Waller looks fantastic. Evan Ingram, if you're playing in season long leagues, same thing for Zach Ertz too, to an extent for these tight ends, is in a very nice buy low spot, both in DFS at $5,000 in DraftKings, but also in your season long leagues. He's being used a lot. He's on 99% of the snaps so far this year. That's number one in the league. He's run 83 routes out of a tight end. He's not blocking at all. That's also number one in the league. So he's being used a lot. Eventually these huge numbers, if he stays healthy, are going to follow through. He's brought in eight receptions for 74 yards on 15 targets. He's in the slot more than 50% of the time so far this year with 36 slot snaps. I think he looks really good. I think it's a buy low spot, 9.2 yards per reception so far. It is a tougher matchup versus Quan Alexander and San Fran, but I think it'll be okay in the long run for him. I think it's a pretty decent spot to buy low on Evan Ingram in all fantasy formats. And that includes Doc Market where he's 113th overall. I do think that that's a nice buy low spot. Next up, Hunter Henry. I think last week we saw it with Hunter Henry in week two. He sees six receptions, 83 yards on eight targets, a 26% team target share from Justin Herbert. He was fine week one with Tyrod Taylor. It seems like Hunter Henry is getting his matchup problems and getting separation. He's third in tight end target share with the 26.7% tight end target share in the season. He's fifth in targets. He's first in deep targets tied with Hayden Hurst with three so far, fourth in receptions, and he's top five in a bunch of other categories through two weeks. I think at $4,800 in this matchup against Carolina, 
he's very much underpriced. This is a very good spot, especially if you're stacking up Justin Herbert to get yourself some Hunter Henry. Next up, Hayden Hurst is in play. I do think I prefer Hunter Henry this week, but Hayden Hurst has been seeing 55% of the slot snaps. He's been seeing 78 routes run in the year. That's top five overall in the league so far. He's seen 140 air yards, which is top five for tight ends. Three deep targets, again, is tied with Hunter Henry for first in the league. He's going to have a tougher matchup against Roquan Smith, but I think it's winnable, especially if he's going to go downfield a little bit more and get into the secondary of Chicago. So he's in play for me. Obviously, George Kittle's in play. Keep an eye on it. They say he's still battling through this injury. He's going to be in play. He's my highest projected overall tight end. He's my second value play right now at the tight end position. If you're just talking point per dollar, bang for your buck value. I've been projected for nearly 17 fantasy points, which makes him my second value play. But if you want to peek behind the curtain at Patreon, again, linked it down below. It's on the screen right now popping up. If you're listening on the podcast, you can get all my tools and projections and everything you need to be more informed, to have a better opportunity to win right now. But for tight ends, my number one value play is Zach Ertz. Jalen Rieger helps us out even more. Zach Ertz is in the slot 55% of the time. He's not being looked at downfield as much, which is a concern, just 8.4 yards per reception, but he's on the field for 93% of the snaps. He's ran the third most routes in the league for tight ends at the 74. He's seen 14 targets and a 17% target share. Obviously, I want to see a more down the field Zach Ertz. Obviously, I want to see some red zone usage and touchdowns there like we saw week one on the first drive of the game. Zach Ertz, in my opinion, yes, there is a gap that's closing and maybe Dallas Goddard has already caught him in terms of their last 10 games played together, him being the better tight end, quote unquote, but they're pretty equal. Zach Ertz is still really good and Zach Ertz is way too cheap at $5,100 in my opinion. I think on Jock Market, it's appropriate, the 85th overall rank, but $5,100 on DraftKings, in my opinion, is just too cheap. I do also have interest in Dallas Goddard this week, who Goddard has been on the field for 89% of the snaps, has been running similar amounts of routes around 67. He's fine to play, but I have more interest right now in Zach Ertz. And the final tight end that's a yes for me, and then we'll talk about some of the other interests that I do have, is going to be Logan Thomas, who last week did nothing except see nine targets, right? He didn't bring much of them down. He'll have a positive advantage this week. He saw four receptions, 26 yards, nine targets. So he obviously brought some down, but he didn't go off. But 6.6 fantasy points out of a $3,000 tight end is fine, especially when the upside is in the nine targets, which was second on the team last week. I mean, his second in target share only behind the elite target share of almost 40% of Darren Waller with a 27% target share. He's seen three red zone targets. He's seen two deep targets, which are both top three for tight ends. And he's number one in route participation. He's ran a route on 100% of the dropbacks, which reminds me that Adam Thielen has also done that at the wide receiver position for Minnesota. But Logan Thomas is heavily involved, 17 targets through two games, eight and nine so far. And he's still just $3,700. I like going back to him here. Now, some players that I have interest in, but I don't want to get too jumping up and down about them. A lot of these younger players in Noah Font, Jonu Smith, and TJ Hawkinson. Look, I get it. No fun. I, I can't go there. Jeff Driscoll doesn't target tight ends. No fun is relying on touchdowns a lot right now. Same exact thing can be said for Jonu Smith. These two guys are probably sell high spots in your season long leagues, in my opinion, especially Jonu Smith. Look, Jonu Smith's touchdown rate right now of like 30 something percent, 38% is just not going to hold up. And when Ryan Tannehill only throws 30 times and not 40 plus like he did week one, Jonu Smith's probably only going to see like five targets a game. Look, I think Jonu Smith's fantastic. Athlete wise, I think he's a top five athlete tight end in the league. But do I think that that numbers sustain on only like five targets or six targets a game if indeed they're not going to throw? 35 plus times a game, but stay closer to 30 like last year, it's going to be tough. So right now for people that think he's like a top five tight end in your leagues, try and sell him like that. Try and sell him as high as you possibly can. And his price point of 5,200, it is a good matchup. So he's in play for me, but I think his overall volume, I'm not going to get as much. I want to try and lock in eight to 10 targets. And I think I can do that with some of the guys that I've listed as yeses compared to Noah Font, Johnny Smith, and TJ Hawkinson. It's also worth pointing out that they're not letting TJ Hawkinson run wild just yet. Uh, he's kind of limited to an extent right now. They're not letting him fully go yet. He's been rehabbing all off season, that foot injury. And it's seems like they're making an active and conscious effort to not allow him to go all out. We talked about Dallas Goddard. I do have some interest still in Dalton Schultz, Drew Sample, and Chris Herndon. I'm going to have interest there. Chris Herndon and Drew Sample are cheap still. I would prefer Herndon there, but I would prefer Logan Thomas over both of them. Dalton Schultz so far through basically one and a half weeks because he obviously didn't play much in the first half before Jarwin got hurt week one. He's seen 14 targets, 10 receptions, 99 yards. Those are all top 10 in the league for tight ends. And he's seen four red zone targets, which is pretty important to call out. So Dalton Schultz, yes, he went off last week. They threw a bunch overall, but I do think he's still pretty much in play at 4,500, especially in your game stacks and your team stacks with Dallas and Seattle. So that's where we're at right now, gang. It's a longer video because it's the closing thoughts, the final thoughts video. Closing thoughts podcast will be up this weekend over on Patreon. You can check that out link down below. But thanks for tuning in. Please do hit the like button and the subscribe button before you go. A bunch of information. If you thought that this was a lot of information, there's even more. Every single player you can think of wanting to play, 25 pages of game by game notes on Patreon linked down below. Please do hit that like and subscribe button before you go. The goal is to get to 30,000 subscribers by the end of the month. We got about a week to do so I think we can get there. We just need a little bit of a push from you guys. So hit the like button, hit the big old subscribe button that's popping up. Check out Jock Market and download their app today in the Apple Store and go to their website, whatever one you want to do, linked down below. It's where a stock exchange meets daily fantasy sports. It's where they have a free $1,200 contest, but the cash markets are what set them apart. And it makes it so, so, so an adrenaline rush right before lock and so fun to be playing this. It's a ton of fun. Buy low, sell high. That's the whole goal of this stuff. Thanks so
so much, everybody. I'm going to have a player prop video out this weekend, and then Sunday we'll go live at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of when we go live. You all rock, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, gang.